Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Footy Travellers Podcast. Hey everybody, Colin here, with just a quick announcement before we get into this episode. The footy travelers are once again packing up the production kit and hitting the road. We'll be in Austin the weekend of August 6th, and we'll be attending the Austin FC San Jose match. So if you'll be there as well, we'd love to connect and hear about what life is like in ATX as a fan of the beautiful game. It's also the show's first time in the capital city of Texas. So if you're hearing this and have any travel advice or recommendations for us, whether it's a place to stay, your favorite bar or restaurant, or even the best place to catch a McConaughey sighting, slide into those DMs and let us know. We're on Instagram as at footy travelers. All right, without further ado, here's this week's episode. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Footy Travelers podcast, and a special welcome back to our World Cup Need to Know series, where Mike and I reflect on our past World Cup experiences and share what we've looked into and learned about the upcoming World Cup. Surely, as I say that, you know that I am joined, as always, by Mr. Michael Tyrone. Mike, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing very well. I'm happy to uh, do another one of these episodes as it's been a bit of a need to know series gap for us. So excited to talk about the upcoming World Cup once again. Awesome. Awesome. And you look very well hydrated today, if I may say so, for our (laughs) listeners who are not seeing your beautiful glistening face. Yeah, very hydrated, recently hydrated, chugging a lot of water right now. In past World Cup Need to Know episodes, we've talked about things such as the stadiums we'll all be sitting in watching the footy, as well as tickets, how to get them when they're on sale. Speaking of tickets, the most recent update, which is we are currently in the phase two, first come, first serve period of tickets, which started July 5th and is going until August 16th, probably the most highest demand phase, I would imagine, for tickets, as we know, a lot of people uh, were unable to get tickets in the first few phases. And now that all the teams are determined and the groups are set, there's a bit more of a specific interest in certain teams. So if you haven't logged in and you are intending to attend the World Cup, make sure you get into the website. But you have your tickets, perhaps. And the question is, now what? Do we go for flights? Do we try to book our hotels? We'll talk about all of those things in this episode. And we're going to talk about those things with a very special guest host today, a fellow footy traveler from what we can gather a loyal listener to the Footy Travelers podcast. And as you'll probably hear more about later, an upcoming roommate of ours for the World Cup, Mr. Rob Cervantes. Rob, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here among fellow footy travelers. Now, Rob, we've slowly gotten to know you over the last few months through the podcast, through the Instagram. Sliding uh, into our DMs. In, 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 all, in all times of the night, by the way, as well. <laughs> Very true. The hour of the day is not a concern for our connection. <laughs> and Rob, we'll let you explain what you discovered about lodging and booking, what will be our shared accommodation in November uh, in a minute. But let's start off this episode, Mike, by pointing out a very specific uh, nuance, if you will, about how all of this should go down after someone secures match tickets to this upcoming World Cup. Yes. So in more recent World Cups, there is now a requirement for what is someone called or sometimes called a fan ID. So we've mentioned uh, needing one of those in previous World Cups. And so this World Cup is uh, going to be the same. It is no longer called a fan ID, though. It's called a HIA card. HIA standing for uh, to come or to arrival. 
And so it will grant you access to the country, much like a visa, um, to stadiums along with tickets, fan zones, and access to free transportation. So do not forget to apply for your HIA card as well. But before you can apply for your card, beyond getting your tickets, you need to confirm your accommodation. This is a requirement by the government. So get your card, but you got to get your accommodate your accommodation first and foremost. And as Rob uh, flashes his fan ID from the Russia World Cup in 2018, listeners, you, you can't see it, but a very well laminated and a colorful lanyard card. Uh, I will add, Mike says government, uh, could call it the organizing committee, Qatar, the government, the organizing committee, one and the same, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So moving into the topic of lodging, Mike, as you said, we need to have that first. Getting your lodging requires a ticket application number, and you have to go through a very specific portal. Uh, real quick, we'll mention that portal. It's simply Qatar2022.qa. And going through this portal will surely and hopefully offer you more success than the traditional routes. Perhaps you're like me, and six months ago you went online, and you did a simple Google search or a hotel search for rooms or Airbnbs or VRBOs. And really, you found that there's nothing available. Or if something is available, it's around $1,000 a night for the period of the tournament. And that's simply because there isn't anything available through traditional means. Now, whether that's because teams have already booked them or corporate sponsors already have a hold of them, you know, who knows? Going through this portal will offer you access to what, again, as we alluded to, is the government or organizing committee's control of all the accommodations within Doha and Qatar for the World Cup. Now, this is typical Colin being skeptical. I'm going to play the optimist here. Let's remember, this World Cup is in the smallest modern country it's hosted, and it's only going to be in one city. So organizing and having a very clear restriction to who is allowed to stay where makes a little bit more sense because if you didn't, it could be a bit of mayhem. Now, when you're, you know, in Brazil and you've got a country that can handle large influx of people and a country hotels, that can handle it. Yes. Sorry. That's I'm sorry. I interrupted you. I interrupted you. Carry on. No, no, no. I just, I, I wanted to reiterate that, that point because though it seems like it's a little bit, strict in the way that they're enforcing this uh, and the order in which you have to do each step with its various dependencies, it does, uh, you know, sort of add up in terms of what their capabilities are. Fair enough. Mike, you always offer a great, well-balanced devil's advocate perspective. Thank you. <laughs> now, Mike, you and I, we have our tickets, as we've mentioned in previous episodes. We have now our accommodation. And we have Rob to thank for that. So very Rob, much so. Much obliged, Rob. Much obliged. <laughs> Rob, I'd love to ask you what your experience was looking for accommodation after you got your tickets. And then kind of, you know, what was your decision in getting the specific accommodation you did, needing this, I don't want to ruin your story, but needing the people you needed it needed to fill it. Um, and just just all of it. What was your experience like? It was chaotic because, you know, I, as, as you guys know, I went to Russia 2018 and I was able to use booking or not Airbnb, but like I use Hilton, Marriott, you know, I, I, I use traditional means that we're used to when the world cup was announced and then it got closer where you could potentially book dates um, in hotels, everything was blocked off. Um, it was not available at all whatsoever. So it looks like what the organizing committee or the government or the owners of PSG said was <laughs> we're going to, all the same. We're going to own all these rooms and pretty much release some piecemeal. Some rooms are only for hospitality folks. Some villas, apartments are not even built yet. Some tents, little uh, mobile homes are not built yet either. So the inventory was kept changing. At one point, they talked about cruise ships being in use, and that, and they, actually, that's happening now too. Um, so the cruise ships will be available. They will be docked in Doha. So you, you you're not going to gallivant. You're not going to have like you know a formal night and have lobster tails or anything. 
Um, so you'll be you'll be docked on the dock, and then uh, you'd stay on a cruise ship, and you get to you get to leave as you please, right? It was chaotic because the inventory kept changing, and then you know, in in my case or in our case, I should say, we had six people, and we we're trying to get a villa or apartment that had not only Wi-Fi, uh, in my opinion, close to a metro. In my opinion, also needed something close to the airport and someone in the middle of where all of us are going to games. So, for example, a lot of us have USA tickets, right? So we wanted to stay in the Doha area because pretty much most of the games will be right smack in the middle between the, the three stadiums. And so then at the same time, there's six of us and... We all want separate beds, right? Obviously, you know, like I, I snore, I move, I can hit people when I sleep. And, or, or you know, we want to get back late. You know, when we get back late after doing whatever we do here with the, our microphones and everything, we don't want to disturb anybody. So we had to get a, a villa that had three bedrooms that had two beds each. That was nearly impossible because it's a very specific requirement that's not really, is not the most popular. Most of the room of villas had two of the bedrooms had two uh, separate beds, and then one bedroom had you know a big giant bed for two people. You know, look, I like you guys, but I don't know you'd like that yet. You, you have to give me. Consent. Oh, just wait, Rob. Just wait. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> after, after we have a bunch of Shirley Temples, because there's no alcohol in Qatar, by the way. Yes, the sugar high will bring us together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the maraschino cherries. And uh, so, and then at the same time, you know. In order to book these rooms and, uh, and villas and apartments, you need everybody's information. You need passport numbers. You need expiration dates, when the passport was made, you know, what country you were born in and live in now. All these details on all the different guests to make the application work. And you need to have tipic- ticket application numbers as well. And the reason and is- you need them all at the same time, right? Because we were, I remember you and I were talking and we were both looking at inventory and it was literally changing on its, on the screen. And it was just like, it, nothing was being held. And I think we were waiting on one more person's information, their ticket application number or something. And, it, and so all of the, all of the factors at play definitely seemed like it made it chaotic, but I cut you off. So keep going. No, no, it, it was, yeah, you need it. To, you need all the information and like the inventory changing. And not, not only because people were like maybe booking, but then like took it out the cart, but also Qatar was actually really still getting these things ready. Like I guarantee you there's apartments still being, being made and being furnished and being put into stock and in inventory stock. Anyone um, that goes to the site and looks at some of the options for apartments will see the stock photo on every location entry of the, what is available. And you'll just say, oh, this is a real estate you know, company putting up not yet finished apartments. And, and all, the, all the apartments are run by Accord, which is a big European-based uh, hotel chain. I actually stayed in one Accord hotel in, in uh, Kazan, uh, Russia. So I'm familiar with the brand. I'm a little disappointed that I cannot use my Accord membership to get some points. So it is what it is. But we, you know, we we got it booked, and that's good because we booked it before phase two of first come first serve tickets. Because now people are buying their tickets, and now it's a rush. It's a rush for for hotels and rooms and, and everything. If you're a USA fan, you're a USA supporter, especially if you're an AO member, American Outlaws. Um, they just came out with their their packages as well. And one of them is a cruise ship, and there I think villas are popping up here and there. Um, but we we got ours in the time where we were able to make a little bit of a better choice. Also, the one good thing about these apartments, all of them have Wi-Fi. All of them have you know a couple sofas in there, a full kitchen, has a washer. I don't know about a dryer, but look in the heat, things could dry really quickly out there. We'll do old school line on the line, you know. As long as no one judges me for putting my whites on the uh, on the dry line. <laughs> I will. If you put your one piece USA, uh, you know, whatever you have overalls. <laughs> well, we, you call well, well, we we're, we're debating if it's going to be worth us bringing our uh, USA red, white, and blue flag onesies to Qatar because they are thick cotton Hot. and they they didn't they barely made it through Brazil. So I don't know I don't know if they're going to be able to make the trip. But 
that's I guess that's for another discussion. I I personally think it's going to be funny when Colin you're talking about stock photos of all of these, you know, the same apartment fan villages and whatever. And all I keep thinking about is Fire Festival where everyone's like, "Oh, I'm getting like these super fancy hotels and they get like a emergency uh tents that they had to be put in and cheese sandwiches for meals and stuff." I'm like, "Oh no, don't do this to us." We haven't used the word shit show yet, and we don't know if it's justified using it, but we will follow up at the end of the year and let, and let you all know. Uh, and, and let me just add and support Rob's point about the rush. You know, Mike, you and I communicated on the morning of July 5th, the morning that tickets came back online for first come, first serve. And I went online because you and I needed to book accommodation for the period after we are no longer with Rob. Uh, you know, I think there's a few days on the end of our itinerary where we needed extra accommodation. And to Rob's point, things were thin. The selection was not very full. Uh, so listeners, if you are getting tickets or you have tickets and you still haven't gotten accommodation, definitely encourage you to move pretty quickly and determine how you're going to make that happen. Uh, Rob made another good point that AO, if you are a USA supporter and a member of the American Outlaw Supporters Group, they are organizing accommodation packages, or I should say really organizing accommodation within a whole travel package. And I also got that email today, Rob. Their options seem to be on the cruise ships. And I was definitely trying to avoid that. So Mike, I pulled the trigger and got us a uh, lovely little apartment, if you will, uh, for the remainder of our days. Well, the cruise ship, I, I believe, has the meals included. I think you get one drink per meal. So you get a little something. And, you know, it's hot there. So you get used to the pool, right? But you're still in a cruise ship. Right? And usually yeah. the best part of the cruise ship is being out on the on the deck and, and you know, being, you know, island hopping when you do at least in the Caribbean. Um, not stuck on a cruise ship. That's that movie. Yeah. So there are pluses and minuses, perhaps, to the cruise ship options, of which there are two. I believe we have the MSC World Europa, which goes for somewhere around $350 a night. It's described as a majestic, state-of-the-art entertainment cruise ship, and it will be moored out in the Grand Terminal of West Bay in Doha. And we also have the MSC Poesia, or Poesia. No idea how to pronounce it. The more frugal of the two options, around $180 a night, also in West Bay. This one was described simply as a unique accommodation experience and a world of dining and entertainment possibilities. That means formal night. That means lobster night, potentially. Potentially. That's part of the cruise ship. Or, or donor night. You know, there's a lot of good donor over there, I hope. Yeah. Kebabs. Love them. Fingers crossed. I'm going to go through some other options, though, for those of you that don't have accommodation yet, apart from the cruise ships, if you're trying to avoid some seasickness, uh, there are budget hotels available starting from around $105 per night. That's U.S. dollars. Don't want to promise that they're available in a great number, um, but I did see some of those on the website a few weeks ago. We are recording this in the first week of July, so take that for what it's worth. You, of course have luxury hotels, such as the West Doha Hotel and residences where you can spend up to $5,000 a night. The W. The W. Sorry, Mike, did I not partially uh, pronounce that correctly? Uh, yeah, I don't think it was a pronunciation. It was a misread. Was it a full uh, misinterpretation of the letter W as it stood for something <laughs> that actually didn't it? Correct. Although you were just talking about West Bank, so seeing a W in front of a word, I, I mean, it makes sense. Well, the W Doha Hotel is available. Um, but I would say that was much more of an outlier among the larger group of accommodations that are still available. You have holiday homes or executive apartments. They're going to run you roughly between $3,300 and $700 a night. Uh, or as Rob mentioned, we got a, a villa or apartment. I saw one as low as $84 a night. You can run that all the way up to $944 a night. Again, these are things that we've checked uh, roughly in the early parts of July. One of the things I'll mention is when speaking about apartments is Airbnb. That's typically what people are going to ask. Like, what about Airbnbs? They 
I have read that they are allowing Airbnbs, but they the Airbnb host has to get certified and approved by the FIFA organization and the government to actually allow for hosts. And I don't think they can even, I think with that, they cannot be on Airbnb to um, provide the accommodations. They still have to go through the FIFA portal. Yeah. So basically the government needs to be involved. So it has to be on this website. Yeah. One note, one note about the luxury hotels. Um, there have been reports that if you book a luxury hotel, potentially they might move you because a team might want that hotel. So does that, that has happened before. Um, someone had to hire it and it moved, moved somebody to the marquee uh, or marry a marquee, one of them. And without warning, it is what it is. It has moved your reservation over. I, I think the price was the same, but yeah, you had no choice in the matter. And so it could be a worse location for you or further from the metro and then your, your SOL. So, hey, if you have $5,000 a night to blow in a luxury hotel, FIFA doesn't care. You're out. See you later. Someone's got more money. Now, for those who are finding slim pickings and accommodations, there has there has been a program that's going to get started where Qatar Airways will fly you from different countries. Uh, Saudi Arabia, I believe, is one of them. Maybe in, in Istanbul. I mean, sorry, Turkey. So it don't, pretty much you're running like almost like a shuttle per se. You're going to go fly in the day of the match, go to the match fly back to the country and stay in your accommodations that way. I mean, that somewhat is an option, I guess, but then you're, you're running the risk of, you know, potentially uh, something going wrong with the plane as far as like delays and mechanical issues, or, I mean, I don't think weather's going to be an issue. I mean, I don't know how Del- delays in airlines right now. What are you talking about? No, I mean, airplane no, right? travel is very consistent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as consistent as gravity. Yes, no, but that's an issue. That's something to consider as well. It, it, and it's why I didn't really want to go that route. I'd rather keep my two feet in Doha and Qatar in general. Rob, you may not be um, completely up on my sarcasm yet, as we're still getting to know each other. But for the most efficient uh, and eco-friendly World Cup so far, I think flights in and out of the country every day just to go to a soccer game makes a lot of sense. Congrats, <laughs> congrats, FIFA. Well done. Speaking of flights, let's move on to that because I know this is probably going to be the next step for a lot of people. We have your tickets. You have your accommodations. You can then apply for your Haya card and you're set to go. And by go, I mean flying to the World Cup in Qatar. Now, flights for me out of Denver, round trip to Doha, were as expensive, I would say, as regular hotel rooms and Airbnbs were hard to find. Again, that was, I began my search six or so months ago. Um, ultimately, I found what I'll call a little bit of a hack based on what my ultimate budget goal was. So for me, a round trip, international trip above $2,000 is starting to stretch it. But heard from a friend about the idea of flying in from a pretty popular spot in Europe, from Frankfurt, Germany. And flights were a reasonable round trip from Frankfurt between there and Doha. So I figured if I could get myself to Frankfurt, pretty cheaply. I could then also tack on a fairly cheap round trip itinerary from Frankfurt. So I will fly myself from Denver to New York. From New York, I have a round trip itinerary to Frankfurt. And then from Frankfurt, I have a round trip itinerary to Doha. And I think it came out to roughly around 1700, 1800 bucks. So just under that, that margin. But I want to hear from you guys. You know, Rob, I think you're going to come from the East Coast as well as Mike, uh, maybe from the Baltimore, maybe DC, maybe Philadelphia area. Different airports might have different prices. Uh, and then Mike, you're probably going to come out. Hopefully, if you'll join me in New York, I'd love to. I'd love to fly with you. <laughs> but Rob, let's let's go with you first. What has been and what will ultimately be your your flight itinerary? So I was looking at the various various options and I use Google flights a lot. And so one of the advantages also of being a Bayern Munich fan and supporter is that I'm well aware of the Qatar Airways and the brand and the options, especially flying out of Munich. So initially my thought was I could fly out of the, the Baltimore area to Munich and then have my pick of flights from Munich uh, to Doha via Qatar Airways. And I was like, you know, in, 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 then I saw like it just the times weren't making sense for me, and I'm leaving on the 19th, and I'm I'm arriving on the 20th. The games start on the 21st, so I'm going with my dad, 
So my dad is actually, you know, he's going to be in Jersey. So I was looking potentially to see if I could fly out of JFK or Newark, et cetera. And so Doha Airways was an option. So it looks like, I mean, sorry, Qatar Airways. Now, I think Qatar Airways is going to be the best option for me, and I'll tell you why. Number one, I've always wanted to experience one of these Middle Eastern airlines. Very posh, award-winning. Um, I follow a lot of travel blogs and, and you know, Twitter accounts. And so they rave about Emirates, Etihad, and Qatar Airways. And also Turkish Airlines as well. Then on top of that, I saw that they actually fly to Philly. So it's actually not too, too much uh, of a trip for me. It, um, I'm actually a little bit further from Philly than from BWI, um, but it's not that bad. And also my dad could meet me in Philly. He could take the Amtrak down. So then we go fly together. Now, all right, so there's two flights from Qatar Airways from Philly to Doha. Direct, by the way. No stopping whatsoever. A little bit pricey, both of them. They're like around $2,400. One of them, you could book it through American. So you get the American miles, but you get ba- you get basic economy, and it's a little bit of a later flight. It's like about an hour and a half, two hours later than the one flight that Qatar Airways runs on their own. Um, now, both flights are on a Qatar Airways plane, but but one of them is run by American, and then one runs exclusively by, by Qatar Airways. So I have chosen the earlier Qatar Airways flight. It gets me into Doha on the 20th of November at around 5 p.m. I could get there and probably crash really hard as soon as I land because I don't sleep on planes at all whatsoever. That's going to be my choice. And so I looked at Dulles. I looked at BWI. I look at, you know, uh, Washington National, aka DCA. Just didn't make sense for me. So it is what it is. So, so I'm going to enjoy Qatar Airways. I'm going to upgrade a little bit on the print on the economy. I'm not going business class because it's about 10 grand, right? Not happening. I'm sorry. You know, I work in the public sector. I'm not a lobbyist. Okay. And, and also I get to get to have 15% off the duty free shop. So I'm going to enjoy that in Doha, you know, now I can't buy alcohol. So I'm probably going to get some perfumes, maybe a cologne. I don't know what else, what else is worth buying duty free. if You can't buy liquor. I did hear you You can buy it duty-free in the Doha airport if you have a departing flight. You can't bring it into the country, though, f- on a inbound flight. So, my- uh, so so I can't take a bottle of Jack Daniels with me into the, uh, into our apartment and we have a little sip while, while we you know do a little recap? I'm, I mean, if you can throw it in a, a Fiji water bottle somehow and, and make it turn clear, it might, it might get through. But from what I've read, from what I've read. So, you know, so I decided Qatar Airways. Google Google Flights is your best option. You know, like you mentioned earlier, you know, check the flights into Europe because sometimes you get a decent flight into Europe and then Qatar Airways flies. It has a lot of flights from Europe, either Heathrow or, or Paris or even or Frankfurt or Munich. Those are good options as well. You know, go a little posh, treat yourself and fly Qatar Airways. Mike, are you going to treat yourself? Oh, man, I was... I was really hoping that this would be the World Cup that I would treat myself for a flight, especially because it was going to be one of the longer ones. And it just was not adding up. Like leaving from the East Coast out of any airport up and down the East Coast, I, I, I enjoy taking the train to get somewhere further if I need to. Like taking the train from Baltimore to Newark is very easy. Um, so Newark airline or airport is a really good place to get out of if you need to. And I couldn't find anything that was not outrageously expensive. So I went a little bit budget, but I also had points. I, I've been saving up a lot of points from my credit card. So I have my flights to Doha. I was using Hopper as um, as a tool that was helping just to look up any flights in the in the prices and how they were fluctuating. And there's also a tool that I've used for a lot of travel called Boots in All, and that helps for like multiple um, stops for flights because I knew I was going to need to break mine up. So right now I've used my points for my credit card points to get me to Doha. So I will be flying out of JFK. Unfortunately, not with you, Colin. I'm sorry. That was the goal, but. <sighs> had to i had to had to 
save on some some dollars there and that flight got a little bit more expensive after you purchased your flight but we will be flying into doha together from frankfurt so that's okay i'll call that a win the the fight we were going to have offline will be a little less dramatic then (laughs) yeah that would have been weird in front of rob and the audience you know that you don't want to see that you don't fight in front of the children exactly (laughs) um and so but I do have uh, an itinerary after Doha that I'm pretty excited about, which I won't go into too much detail. But I will say, Colin, you did advise me. Um, you you provided a very good piece of advice that I am definitely taking, which is because I can work remote, I'm going to be going to Abu Dhabi for our friend Scott's birthday party that um, he invited us to, which is going to be cool. And I've wanted to get to Abu Dhabi for a while. So then I was like, all right, well, I've got a little bit of time. Let me look at some flights on the way back uh, and maybe like cut the distance in half and maybe make it a layover, extended layover for a destination. And there were some pretty cheap flights to some pretty great locations like Cairo was an option that I was really interested in. And so I kicked the idea to Colin knowing that he may not be able to join me. And it was maybe one of the best piece of advice that you've ever given me, which is saying wow. a lot. But you said you're going to be stuck in the Qatari desert for almost two weeks and you want to then go to another desert and hang out there, just one with pyramids. And I was like, yeah, that's a really good point. It's like, why don't you get somewhere cool with water, you know, rest up next to a beach? So, yeah, I I think my my specific advice was if it were me and I was being very self-centered and self-focused in my advice is if it were me, as always, I would want some. I would want some beach time mm-hmm. after, yeah, weeks in in the desert. So I'm glad it worked out as good advice for you as well. So yes, it is very good advice, and I will be taking you up on that advice uh, and hopefully booking my flight in the next few days to the Seychelles. I'm gonna hang out there for maybe four or five days, and then found a pretty good flight back to um, DC. Unfortunately, not BWI, but Dulles, which isn't the greatest location for me to get to, but it's not awful. It's a lot easier than JFK. And yeah, it's a direct flight from Abu Dhabi to uh, Dulles. So that's the game plan. I I mean, I guess the best piece of advice that I could say is like, give yourself an extended amount of time to really try to figure out what the best routes are going to be. And if if, if you really want to save yourself some money, and for those that aren't really looking to save money, you have those flights like Rob mentioned from Philly Direct that are going to be 2400 bucks. which if that's not a large amount for you, then that's going to be an easy answer. But I am excited about doing Qatar Air. I've flown them one other time and they are they are very chic. Um, I've flown an Emirates flight before too and, and a Turkish Air. I just haven't done Etihad. And so I'm excited to enjoy the um i guess they are considered you know the the most most luxurious of airlines in the world you know when people talk about flying you you have to remember as well that you know your your time is valuable and so if you're laying over and doing these connecting flights and you're going to save yourself potentially 400 500 bucks but find out what you're going rated at work and is it worth it you know, to potentially add another variable to your flight. I mean, it's something that is something to consider. Um, but definitely, like you know, this is you know, this is a good opportunity. If you never been to the area, you never been to Doha or the Middle East. You know, you're a hop, skip, and a jump to like Istanbul, to Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Greece. You know, um, Eastern Europe. You know, this is not this is the, your chance. Since you're there and you can find better, cheaper flights, don't don't forget that. And not, not to mention also, if you really are a sports traveler, a lot of these countries, smaller countries, will still have their leads going. So potentially, you can watch the greatest in the world play in the World Cup and all of a sudden, like, find, like, second division Turkish League afterwards, you know. And as you have your donor kebabs and you you enjoy the, the luscious beaches of, of, of Turkey, you know, uh, I'm a big proponent of combining as much as possible on your trips and take every not, every opportunity while you're there because you don't know when you're going to go back. You don't know what, if you want to go back. Don't don't waste this opportunity if you can to in, you know enjoy a part of the world that you you don't see often. Rob, I think that is phenomenal insight and great footy traveler advice. Uh, yeah, you are only on one side of the world, perhaps 
only once in a lifetime. So take advantage of the opportunity to maybe get even more footy travel or just general leisurely travel in if you can. Well, boys, it, it sounds like we're going to be a little bit all over the map in our separate flight itineraries, uh, but for at least a very short while in our lives, two weeks at the very least, we'll be very much in the same spot on the map, traveling within Qatar, traveling mostly in and around Doha. So I want to wind up this episode with a little bit of talk on what transport within the country will look like. Once we've all landed at the airport, there are, of course, a variety of options to get to our shared accommodation. Of course, there are taxis, ride shares. You can also take the metro uh, or a variety of bus services. So when it comes to taxis, look for the Carwa service. Seems to be the major company there. You can pay with cash or digitally, so don't worry about exchanging money right away at the airport if necessary at all. Uber does exist, or you can find the other rideshare company, Kareem, which from what I've read is an Uber company in and of its own right, bought by Uber at some point. On a random June morning, uh, I looked up Doha and checked a little itinerary from the airport to the Al Merkab neighborhood in central Doha, and it was roughly 27 Qatari Real, so just about 750. Um, Al Merkab is pretty central, so something under less than $10 for a little Uber. Uh, your metro, you'll want to take the red line into central Doha from the airport. From there, you can transfer at their central area to the green or the gold lines. Note that you'll have to get a travel card, which will run you about $2.75 to buy. And then you can either add your funds for a single journey or an entire day pass. Mike and I actually toyed with the idea of entering Qatar, not through the airport, but through the land border, flying into Abu Dhabi or Dubai and then driving. We're not going to mess with that, as you heard recently. Uh, but if you do this, just note that you'll definitely need that Haya card that Mike mentioned earlier. When it comes to day-to-day -day transport, how are we all going to get around? Qatar also has a variety of options here, Doha specifically, as well as Lusail in the northern area where they have their own tram. So Qatar rail services include a metro, that aforementioned tram, a Metrolink bus, and a Metro Express bus. Rob, it sounds like you've looked up some of the metro options. Um, hopefully you're as impressed and pleased as I am, but it sounds like getting around won't be that difficult. No, it, no, it won't be at all. The metro looks beautiful. And actually, there's like two classes of metro. There's like the regular metro and there's like the gold line um, the, or the gold section where like you pay a little bit more and it's a little bit more posh and, and it looks like it might be worth it. But you mentioned the, the Lucille tram based on, you know, the games that I wanted to go to. I didn't get to all of them, but the games I wanted to go to, that's going to be kind of the craziest one to go to. There is a shuttle as well to for the England USA game, which we are all very, very excited about. There is a specific shuttle that takes you to the end of, you get the end of the red line, and then you take a shuttle straight to the stadium. Uh, Abait Stadium? Abait, I don't know how you pronounce it. My apologies. I've had the same struggle. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, I hear you. It's, uh, but the, tr the there's trams, there's shuttles. There will, and also, you gotta remember, like, I uh, believe with your higher card, if it knows what games you're going to, I believe the day of the game, your transportation is free. And it was actually the same way in Russia as well, which is lovely. So you just swiped in your fan ID, has a little chip in there. It's probably still tracking me now. Um, but uh, it was really convenient. That's actually a really smart idea. You know, it encourages people to use mass transit and it helps at least in the price so you don't have to use the Kareem or the Uber service at all. Yeah, I remember just having the flash, the fan ID, and the the kind of the custodians and stewards of the metro, at least in the cities we were in in Russia, just kind of led us through. Well, I will say they tried to do that in Brazil, and it was an absolute shit show. And if they had, if you you had to show your match ticket, and then you had to like get a receipt, or remember we were waiting in lines because the lines were so long for people trying to get to Recife stadium and so it's this i think russia did a good job of getting it to be a little bit more efficient i would imagine this is probably going to be even more efficient as kind of another round for them to to make this work yeah looking at some of these options for their metro system uh it seems like doha has it pretty well sussed out i mentioned this metro link and metro express so even if you're not in walking distance to a metro station you can take the metro link 
which I'll describe as really this feeder bus network. Um, they say it provides that first and last mile connectivity. If you're within anywhere from two to five kilometers radius of a metro station, look for a metro link to hop on and get you to that metro station. Uh, you also have the Metro Express, which is a bit of a combo between that Metro Link and those ride shares. So from what I understand, the Metro Express is a ride sharing feeder service, this fleet of branded vans with, with seating up to seven passengers, I believe. So um, I think like a ride share, you would request a Metro Express kind of on demand using that Carwa taxi app. Um, look for that in your app store. Or look in our show notes for a link to that Qatar Organization Committee website where all of these transport, all of these accommodation options are available. But otherwise, you know, public buses, again, seem to be an option. We already mentioned the taxis, the Ubers, and the Kareems. Rob, you have mentioned the shuttle between Lusail as kind of the northernmost outskirt of Doha and getting to Al Bayt in the north. Um, the only question I think that remains is just how smooth getting onto these and how crowded they will be. So I would suggest for all those who love stadiums and are into stadium porn, get there as early as possible because you want to prepare yourself. This is going to be the first time that Qatar throws an event this big. I mean, I know I had the Arab Cup, but it's not a World Cup. I can feel the collective eye rolling from the people listening to this. Um, <laughs> And um, it's going to be of a challenge. There's going to be some quirks. There's going to be some hiccups here. So get there early. You know, you don't have to worry about a flood like in Manaus, okay, which is which is encouraging. But you don't know if, like, the city and the country is ready for this amount of people. Get there early. If you're too early, that's fine. Walk around the stadium. Go get yourself a Coke and a souvenir cup and just walk around and enjoy the peaceful quiet. You get to take a picture of the stadium. But barely anybody in it, and you could maybe put it on your wall or something, or maybe you could you know take a stadium a picture of Stadium Nine Seventy Four because it's only going to be there for a month and that's it and it's gone. A picture lasts forever, but you have to get there early. Give yourself plenty of time. Don't wait till last minute. Don't you? You can't really trust these metros yet. They have not had the amount of people that we're used to, we're accustomed to, especially those who take the metro in DC. We take the metro in New York, and those of us who have took it, taken the metro in Moscow, it's not, they're not used to this. So, don't miss out on any minute of this game, on these games, because you know if you mess up, then you know you might miss a goal. Well, you, you may miss the that. game, you might miss right? The game. I mean, if if yeah. if if you don't plan it and you don't have a a plan A and a plan B and even a plan C, you paid all that money to go do maybe one match or you know whatever, like. I would never be able to live it down if there was some type of logistical error that happened that we didn't have plan A, B, C, and all the way to Z to be able to see the USA England match. If we t somehow were unable to get there, I would, I, I would just, it would kill me. And so, or, you know, or even, plan it out. Or even miss the national anthem in that game. Oh. You know, we wouldn't sing it. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't sing it, you know, in front of them, very loud. So, but yeah, no, you don't want to miss even a little bit of the game, even the national anthem, don't miss it. Be prepared. Well, on that great advice and perhaps the mention of stadium porn, uh, maybe before Mike gets a little too excited, I'll say <laughs> thank you all for listening to today's episode. Hopefully you learned some tips and tricks uh, for your own travels. And if you have some tips and tricks of your own, definitely go ahead and reach out to us on Instagram at Footy Travelers. We'd love to hear them. We'd love to share them with our audience and give you a little shout out yourself. And of course, a big super thank you, not only for the accommodation hookup we'll have in Qatar, but for joining us today as a very insightful guest, Rob Cervantes. Great to uh, have you on the show, buddy. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it, was, it was fun. Until next time, everyone, be loud, be passionate, and be good to each other. The Footy Travelers Podcast is a production of Fiper Media. To learn more about their other work, visit FiperMedia.com. That's F-Y-P-E-R Media.com. Our episodes are edited by me, Colin Martin. Mike Tyrone is our creative director. Cover art is by Felix Palau. Theme music comes from Shumatar, with additional music from Mr. Mastermind. 
Our incredible intro voice is Helen My Mars. You can keep up with all things footy travel by following us on Instagram at footy travelers. We'll see you next time.